I was born on the west coast by the sea. Green trees and morning mist surrounded my home, giving way as the warm, temperate sun that beat down upon my beautiful childhood. Spending hours on the sand and playing in the waves, hiking into the mountains with my friends to explore the forest that surrounded me, walking the palm-lined street as I strolled through the town's old Spanish architecture, with red tiled roofs, white stucco buildings, and intricate wrought iron details. I hung out with my friends at school, visited various museums, and enjoyed life. The people were cool. It was a simpler time. That was until I was 15 years old when my father changed jobs. When he broke the news to me, I was devastated. As an adolescent, I really didn't understand the necessities of life and survival. We pulled up stakes from the land of my birth and moved to the desert in the middle of summer. Now, during my last few days before the move, my best friend handed me Dune. He thought reading it would help in the transition. Now the move, while tiresome, was also exciting. The long trek into the desert was a shock. I had never seen such desolation before other than in old Western movies and TV shows. It was late after our arrival and unloading the truck and cars. It was very late, so we slept. The next day, my brother and I woke early. We wanted to explore. My older cousin hung over from the night before enlisted my brother and me to help him retrace our vehicle's path into town to our new house and find a sock he somehow lost on the way in the night before. The thing we all noticed was that the sun was way too bright. The air was dry, no moisture at all. The air at seven in the morning was dry and hot. We didn't have to walk far before we noticed the houses gave way to empty fields of dirt and tumbleweeds. The wind did blow, but all it did was blast dust into our faces. We turned our heads to cough and spit out the dirt from our mouths. Now, I didn't get around to reading the book right away. It took me several weeks before I found it. After arranging my library, I looked at the book and decided to give it a chance. Now, I didn't get far. I found the book to be slow and tedious. I called my friend and asked him why he gave me this boring book. My friend told me to get past the first 100 pages. Now I did and found myself identifying closely with Paul Atreides, the protagonist of Dune. Now I cannot explain how profound that experience was and how Frank Herbert's philosophy affected me. Since that time, I've had read Dune and all six of Herbert's original Dune series books once a year for more, well over 35 years. I know the book very well. I know the series very well. I also read some of Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson's expanded Dune universe as well. Also, I incorporated many of Dune's principles into my life and how I raise my children. So if you're new here, we cover the film genres of sci-fi, horror, action-adventure, prop culture, and all things geek. So if you want more videos like this, remember to subscribe and click the notification bell so you can be aware whenever I decide to post, uh, post a video. With a new Dune movie out, I thought we could celebrate by looking into The Chris Knife from Denny News adaptation of Frank Herbert's classic novel, Dune. Hi, I'm Rob. And this is A Constantly Racing Mind. Now, I've done a couple of videos concerning Dune. One video features the central religious text of the Imperium, the Orange Catholic Bible. It's a fascinating book if you are into uh, comparative religions, and I'll leave a link in the description. Now, the other video focused on the two versions of the Chris Knives from David Lynch's 1984 version and the 2000 and 2003 sci-fi miniseries of Dune and Children of Dune. I'll leave a link for those videos in the description as well. A Chris Knife is the sacred weapon of the Fremen on Arrakis, 
It is made from the teeth taken from the dead sandworms. And to understand the importance of this Chris knife, we must look at its origins and therefore we must briefly talk about sandworms. Now before the move to Arrakis, while Paul was talking with Yui, he provided the, the young man with a film book on a small specimen that was only about 110 meters long. Better known on the planet Arrakis as Shai Hulud, the old man of the desert, old father of eternity, and grandfather of the desert, the Fremen had a few names for this entity. The name Shai Hulud, when referred to with a specific tone or written with capital letters, designates the earth deity of the Fremen hearth uh, superstition. Sandworms grown to enormous size, specimens longer than 400 meters, have been seen in the deep desert and live to great age unless slain by one of their fellows or drowned in water, which is poisonous to them. Now, most of the sand on Arrakis is credited to sandworm action. Arrakis was a moist planet, and upon the arrival of the sand trout, they insisted all the water to transform into the sandworm. This aligned with the tangible proof discovered on Arrakis which consisted of salt beds that seemed to have been vast oceans in the past. Large bodies of water may be encased in sand, by sand trout, covering a whole terraformed planet into a desert and enabling the survival of sandworms, which cannot exist in a wet environment. In Dune, the sandworms evoke a fascinating aura of mystery, awe, and power. So much for all of that. Let's take a look. I know there are various Dune Chris knife replicas on the market today. However, instead, I once again went with a creator on Etsy. The Chris knife was produced by Stupendous Props out of Greece. Now this item took about a couple of weeks to arrive. Now the knife is delivered in a cardboard poster tube, as well as sealed with packing tape. Villeneuve gives us a first peek at the Chris knife in the new Dune remake we now call part one. Now, when, like in the David Lynch version, the Shadout Mapes presents Jessica with the Chris Knife as a gift. Later, near the end of part one, Paul and Jessica are captured by the Fremen after escaping uh, with Kine's help from the ecological base when it is overrun by Sadokar. Paul is forced to fight Jameis. Uh, Jameis is that guy, you know, the typical dissenter who is always complaining and challenging Stilgar's authority. We see the Chris Knife as the chosen weapon of the Fremen. Apparently the Chris Knife can break, as Jameis calls out, may thy knife chip and shatter. Now as you can see, the replica is wrapped well with bubble wrap. Very well wrapped. During part two, there are various scenes where the knife is flashed, but not necessarily featured. Ow, Jesus. Sharp. That is until the very end when Paul has the Emperor and his entourage captured. Paul kills the Baron with his Chris knife, and then a short bit later, he fights a duel with Fayed Ratha to the death. The battle looks realistic and looks like any modern close quarter hand to hand knife battle. Kudos to the actors for pulling that one off. The blade is silver looking, directly contrasting the bone colored blades of the previous film and miniseries versions. The blade is 3D printed in PLA. The sword and hilt are glued together instead of printed in one piece. The hilt is painted silver and brown, giving it a leathery look. And near the hilt, there is some decorative scrolling. Now, according to the book, Dune, the Fremen manufactures the Chris knife in two forms. The two forms are fixed and unfixed. An unfixed knife requires proximity to a human body's electrical field to prevent disintegration. Fixed knives are treated for storage. Now, all are about 20 centimeters long. Now, I think as I mentioned before, the 2021 and the 2024 Chris knife versions are seem to be a little bit longer. So let's measure it and see what we have. The Stupendous Props Chris Knife is 20.5 inches or 50.7 centimeters long. The blade itself is about 14.5 inches, which is about 36.83 centimeters. The knife is very lightweight. I uh, don't think it's no more than a few ounces, to be honest. I am sure many of you have seen either or both of Denny Villeneuve's adaptations of Frank Herbert's book. I have learned to separate the two mediums after being so engrossed and deeply affected by the novels. 
Stephen King taught me that lesson. People like stories, and this is just another rendition of that story. Villeneuve does an excellent job with both of his films of keeping the central theme in place that Dune, in essence, is a Greek tragedy on the scale of Homer. The hubris is on full display by almost all characters, especially Paul Muad'Dib, the Lisan al-Gib, the voice from the outer world. Denis Villeneuve, for whatever reason he had, and I will not question him on that, decided either for time constraints, budget, or resources to eliminate uh, many scenes and characters that show the underlying motiva motivations of the great houses, the nuances of the culture of the Imperium and of the Fremen. As I said, Villeneuve hit the major plot points while streamlining the story and changed a few of those plot points to tell a somewhat different story. In doing so, he wanted to take us in a different direction, but I'm sure we will ultimately end up in the same place by the end of the next sequel, Dune Messiah. Now, the political statement, while decidedly different than the subtle and gradual understanding that emerges in the books, is more explicit in this film. For example, the Southern fundamentalist Fremen who have presuppositions to their dogmatic beliefs are willing to run headlong into the acceptance of a prophecy that is not divine, but ultimately man-made, or in this case, woman-made. Is that a direct statement of our times politically today? I will leave that to you, dear viewer. Now, the film is an amazing cinematic event. Everything about the production of Dune is fantastic and draws the viewer into the experience. I believe the acting in this film is stronger than it was in the previous part one film. Overall, the new Doom films are excellent as long as you let go of that novels to enjoy the visuals, the special effects, the grandeur, and the scale of this epic tale. For me, the best Doom films are the ones I create in my mind as I read or think back about scenes in the novel and picture them as I imagine them to be. So after high school, I returned from the desert and enjoyed the ocean, the cool breeze, and moderate temperatures. Once again, the desert beckoned me to return, and I heeded its call, and have remained in the desert for over half my life. The desert is my home, and here I remain. So if you liked the video and got something from it, please hit the like button, and it really helps the channel get seen by the YouTube algorithm. Comment on your thoughts about the film and what you think about the replica, Chris Knife. And most of all, take care. Until next time.